Hi, Angie Com. So it's clear it's Friday. It's almost beer o'clock. You'll want to end. Uh, so my talk is very short and very light. Uh, mostly I'm here because I wanted to say thanks to the Angular team and the Angular community uh, for building such a great product that uh, made my life a lot easier uh, a year ago. So. So uh, my name is Silvano. Uh, I work at Google. Uh, I work in Google Developer Relations. And uh, a little over one year ago, uh, I moved from Europe to California. Uh, and I was working on Google Plus Developer Relations. Uh, and at that time, uh, we were building Google Plus Sign-In. Uh, under the umbrella of Google Plus Sign-In, the main feature was uh, simple and secure authentication for third-party websites and apps. Uh, but we also had a lot more features. Uh, we had over-the-air installs, uh, the possibility of installing Android app to the user Android device in the context of the uh, sign in to your website with no click involved. Uh, interactive posts, a new form of sharing content, uh, which would allow you to share not only the content, but also actions that could be taken on the content. Uh, so for example, a landing page for a game uh, but also a button that would allow you to start playing the game. Social graph access, so the app could know some of the friends uh, in the circles of the users, uh, with, the users with the user being able to choose which circles to expose in a flat way to the app. And also app activities, uh, a way of registering uh, the activities of the user on your app. So activities like listening to something, uh, reading to something, and stuff like that. So how many of you knew about this and have tried to do something with this? Just you. <laughs> you sure no one else knew? OK. <laughs> Too late. So um, while we were doing this, uh, as you can see, it was a whole lot of features. and. Uh, in developer relations, uh, we needed to do two things. So the first thing was build uh, code to showcase internally what we were building, and uh, basically to validate that uh, the features we were building and the developer experience was good. Uh, but we also needed sample applications to open source to external developers uh, once, the product, once the product was launched. launched. Uh, and here comes uh, AngularJS into play. Uh, why? Uh, because in the beginning, uh, we had separate, simple, vanilla JavaScript apps uh, that were good for the external developers because it was easy to understand how to implement the feature. Uh, but then we also decided that we wanted further validation of what we were building. And what we wanted to do was test the whole experience uh, with all the Googlers. So basically, in three weeks, uh, we tried to build an app uh, that was compelling enough uh, to have all the Googlers playing with the game and give us feedback on the whole experience. Now, the life of a developer programs engineer, which is what I do, is full of adventure and full of unforeseen circumstances and events. And there's not much time to focus on a single task. Uh, we have to reply to email, we have to help partners, we have to uh, do many different things. Uh, and the way we structured uh, this app, uh, we wanted to have three different clients, a web client, a native Android client, because we had an off a native offering for Android, a native iOS client. And to make all of that work, uh, we, had, we implemented a, an API, uh, a service level, uh, which initially was implemented using Java and App Engine. I was writing the back end, and at the same time, I was writing the front end. So the thing was, I had a lot of time to spend on the back end, and thanks to Angular, very little time to spend on the front end. Uh, because it, the iteration that lasted longer was probably 30 minutes on Angular. Now, if you want to take a look at what PhotoAnt is, I will try. So anyway, it was a great app, yeah. Someone said it, and uh, yeah. Uh, 
let's see if it does come back. And if it doesn't, I will just uh, go on telling you what I wanted to say. Uh, basically, uh, what is that made uh, the development so much faster? Um, mostly three things. Uh, the first one is the data binding. Uh, I guess data binding is uh, the thing that gets you into Angular in the beginning. Uh, you drive on cat and you're like, oh, look, this is very cool, and I can do my filters, and I see the fonts that I like, and it takes you 15 minutes, right? Uh, what we were doing in the front end was basically just showing a whole bunch of photos uh, took by the users, took by the friends of the users, all the photos that were there. Uh, and all these occurred to my product managers at different times. Uh, they didn't have a clear idea in the beginning, so they were always proposing something different to me. Uh, so this is, uh, this is an instance of Photoan that I spinned up this afternoon. Uh, if you want, uh, if you go to developers.google.com slash plus slash Photoan, uh, you can find all the instructions that you need to spin up an instance. So it was a collection of photos uh, from the different users. And uh, you might know this guy by now. Uh, different teams, uh, possibility of ordering, uh, recent photos, popular photos, uh, and also possibility of doing the interactive shares as I did. Uh, this is an example of the interactive share uh, where the action would be vo already voting on the photo uh, that some friends were uh, sharing with you. Uh, I cannot show to you the sign-in, uh, but uh, at the sign-in time, we also had an Android app that was in the Play Store, so the first time the user signed in, they would uh, be asked if they wanted to install the app in one of their Android devices. Uh, so going back to what I was saying, what made development faster? As I said, the data binding. So for example, adding the ordering of the pictures, uh, recent pictures, popular pictures, we had three different classes of pictures, all the pictures from all the friends, all the pictures from the user, all the photos that were being added for that team. It was easy as defining a function, ordered by, define an attribute, and in the function, it was uh, defining, uh, the, specifying the field that would do the ordering, and then changing the classes on the button. And at the very last, what was the list of photos? Just have it ordered by the field specified by ordering. And it took me 15 minutes to do this. Uh, the second one was the services and the dependence injection. Uh, things like the conf. We needed the conf for uh, some of the parameters uh, that the sign-in and the interactive post widgets required, like uh, the client ID of the project on the Google Developer Console, uh, the O2 scopes that the app was requiring, and stuff like that. We needed it in different points. So we just had a com services, injected it where we needed it, and all the data was available. And the other thing is, on the point of the services, we had a photo and API, which was these other services uh, using HTTP. And it took me usually one hour to implement the call on the backend, and one minute to do the same uh, in Angular. And the last thing is the directives. Uh, the photo, uh, as I said, we had all these different collections of photos. Uh, the single panel of the photo had some business logic in it, like uh, a user, only the owner could del delete a photo, but the owner could not vote on his picture, just other users could vote on the pictures and stuff like that. Uh, and do it, it with directives uh, was so smooth. Uh, and in the end, in the index.html, uh, we just had to think about where to place the data and in the directives itself, define all the com complex uh, business logic with the possibility, again, of injecting the configuration and injecting the photo and API, so the service that was talking uh, to the backend. Now, tests. I would boo myself now if I were you. Um, because I didn't write any tests. So I, I started writing tests, and then it would took me 15 minutes to write the code, and if I also had to write the test, it would take me like half an hour. And uh, <laughs> I like to play foosball. So 
That's the thing. You like football. No, but you already got one. So, I mean. so but there were two reasons why we really didn't need that much testing. Uh, once the iteration were finished, uh, this was not a production app. Uh, we used it for uh, two or three weeks internally uh, with a locked set of features. And then it was done. We just open sourced it for the community. And at that point, uh, if something didn't work, it was enough to have issues reported on the GitHub project or pull requests uh, to fix the problem. The other thing uh, for which I usually write tests and do test-driven development is the impact on the code design. I think that's the best thing about test-driven development. It forces you to write testable code, which means it forces you to write code that is modular, that is testable, and uh, simple to understand, and decoupled. But with Angular, you got that for free. I mean, it, it comes with the framework. Uh, so it's very hard to write uh, bad code uh, because you already have all the layers uh, that you need. And I do love layers, and this is the reason why. <laughs> Who loves layers? 